Hello brothers and sisters, God bless, hope your night or day is going good, everything's going well with you. The following clip was uploaded very recently. It will demonstrate that John MacArthur has a false gospel and it gets believers to try to look to the law for their ultimate justification and right standing before God. He makes people believe that their eternal life is based upon law dependency. And so we're going to get into this clip, we're going to line it up with the word of God and we're going to show how John MacArthur has a false gospel. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being and they obey. That's not what Jesus said. If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. So this clip here is another demonstration that John MacArthur has a false gospel. He says what identifies a true believer is somebody who loves God with all their heart, mind, and soul, which is in relationship to the law, one of the greatest commandments. So what he's saying is what identifies a true believer is their law compliance and their law obedience, ultimately. Since to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength is one of the greatest commandments. So what John MacArthur is saying is to know if someone has an ultimate true right standing with God, they will have law obedience. But the Bible says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That when you put your faith in Christ, the law has come to its end in terms of having to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and strength as evidence for salvation or to be saved. But John MacArthur is saying that the evidence of a true believer is that they are keeping the law, not that the law has come to its end, but they're actually keeping the law. He's one under the delusion that he can actually keep the law in terms of loving God with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus was speaking to a lawyer and he said, the greatest commandment was to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second was like it, to love God your neighbor as you love yourself on these two hang all the law and the prophets so the whole law is connected to love God with all your heart mind and soul and love your neighbor as you love yourself you can't divorce the idea that if you really believe that you're loving God with all your heart mind and soul and strength then you have to be obedient to the entire law you have to be keeping the entirety of the law to demonstrate that you can never be guilty at any point and have any infraction under the law because any time you do, that would be a sign that you're not loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Since all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So what John MacArthur is suggesting is that to be a true believer, evidence of that is that you will be keeping the law. Now, this is the total opposite of how the Apostle Paul taught the functionality of the law. He said, through the law, I died to the law that I might live for God. That to live for God, you actually have to die to law. This isn't dying to law when you believe that you are keeping the law to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and all the law is connected to that. Which means you believe that you're obedient to all those other principles under the law by which is demonstrating that you're loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I'm gonna play back the clip again so we can refresh ourselves in what he said and talk about it some more. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being, and they obey. That's not what Jesus said. If you love me, what? Keep my commandments. 
So this is an example of John MacArthur not rightly dividing the word of truth, not rightly dividing the functionality of the law, and not clarifying what Jesus said when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Because in the scripture, Jesus tells us, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus makes a differential between his commandments and the father's commandments, something that John MacArthur's not doing. The apostles made the differential between the father's commandments and Jesus's commandments. First, John says, this is his commandment to believe on the name of the son of God and to love one another. And that was the commandment that Jesus was referencing when he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He wasn't referencing the Ten Commandments. He was referencing his commandment, which is clarified in 1 John. This is his commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God and to love one another. Jesus reiterated this commandment all through his ministry, like John chapter 6, verse 47. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has everlasting life. Jesus is telling us to believe in him, and in believing, we will have eternal life. That's how we know we have salvation, is by believing in the Son. When the disciples asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? Jesus says, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one that he sent. So again, Jesus reiterates his commandment. The disciples thought there would be many works, many things they would have to do. What must we do to do the works of God in the plural, they asked. And Jesus said one singular thing. This is the work of God to believe in the one that he sent. When Jesus tells us about the will of the Father, the will of the Father is also that we keep the first John commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God. Jesus says, this is the will of my Father, that all that look to the Son and believe in him will have eternal life. So the will of the Father is that we keep the first John commandment to believe on the name of the Son of God. This is the will of my Father, that all that look to the Son and believe in him will have eternal life. So that's how we can know that we have eternal life, because we believe in the Son, not because we look to our works and our obedience under the law. And so John MacArthur is not rightly dividing things when he says, Jesus is, quote, if you love me, keep my commandments, because there's more to the verse. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments, just as I've loved my Father and have kept his commandments. So there's a differential between what Jesus could do, only Jesus could love the Father with all his heart, mind, and soul. Only he could make that boast. And so the evidence that we have a right standing with God is through the life of Christ by which we have faith in. It's not by the law that we look to by which we believe we have a right standing with God. As Paul said, may I be found in him having a righteousness not of my own, which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. In other words, may I be found in him having a right standing before God, not through the law. In other words, not through loving God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. A righteousness that doesn't come through the law, a right standing that doesn't come through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness, even a right standing with God that comes on the basis of faith. So this is an example that John MacArthur is not living for God and he's not teaching other people to live for God because to live for God, you have to die to the law, as the Apostle Paul said. Through the law, I died to the law that I might live for God. Because to live for God, you have to live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us. As Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. When Jesus Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, the scripture says he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We live by faith in the Son of God who loved us, gave himself up for us. He made us without blemish, free from accusation holiness sight and it wasn't law dependent it wasn't because we love god with all our heart mind and soul and strength so that's not an evidence that we're christians if we're keeping the law again he's under the self-delusion that he's actually keeping the law the scripture says whatever the law says it says to those who are under the law that the whole world will become guilty before god and every mouth would be stopped anybody under the law and trying to be under the law the law just reveals that you don't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and that you're guilty before God. And since the law only shows us guilt, 
the scripture says the law is a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. But once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer the schoolmaster. Once you've been justified by faith, you have a non-guilty verdict. You're no longer under the schoolmaster. The thing that showed you that you were guilty, showed you that you were unrighteous, showed you that you weren't loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so the schoolmaster led you to a righteousness that's not your own through the law. It led you to Jesus Christ, who is your righteousness. So evidence of being a true believer or evidence of having a right standing before God is not through a person keeping the law or loving God with all their heart, mind, and soul and strength, as John MacArthur is suggesting here. The evidence that you have a right standing with God and your righteousness in his sight is faith alone and Christ alone. And in fact, according to the scripture, if you go back to the law to look for a right standing before God, you nullify the grace of God. If you try to look to the law to try to see if you're loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength to see if you have a right standing before God, you nullify the grace of God. The scripture says, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. If my right standing came through loving God with all my heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and this was evidence that I was a Christian, then Christ died needlessly. What John MacArthur is ultimately getting people to do is look to the law for their ultimate right standing before God and to know that they are righteous in his sight, to know if they are true believers. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being and they obey. So by implication, what he's saying here is how do you know that you are a believer and have an ultimate right standing with God is because you obey, is because you're obedient. You can ultimately know that you're a believer and you have a right standing before God. By implication, that's what this means that your obedience represents your right standing before God, but it's Jesus' obedience by which we have a righteousness and a right standing before God. Just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the one man's obedience, the many are made righteous. So we don't look to our obedience under the law by which we have a right standing before God. We look to Jesus' obedience under the law by which we have a right standing before God, by which we're righteous in his sight. By the one man's obedience, the many are made righteous. And according to Romans chapter 3, verse 22, that's simply by faith in Christ. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. That were collectively and equally made righteous in God's sight by his righteousness, even the righteousness of God. So this isn't man's righteousness produced by loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. This is God's righteousness given to us by faith. And we collectively and equally share it through the one man's obedience. This demonstrates that John MacArthur has a false gospel because he's suggesting that your right standing comes through your obedience. The way that you can know that you're a true believer is that you're keeping the law, that you're loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And since all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself, by implication, what he's saying is to be a true believer, and the evidence of that is you'll be keeping the entirety of the law. Since all the law and the prophets hang on, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. What John MacArthur is ultimately teaching is the evidence that you will have a right standing before God is that you will be keeping the law. Not by faith alone in Christ alone the moment you believe, you'll have to look to some future version of yourself, some future performance to the law, of loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength to know that you actually do have a right standing before God. And the Apostle Paul in Scripture addresses people like John MacArthur and that type of mentality when it says, I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness are seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone who believes.
that people who are ignorant of God's righteousness will seek to establish their own right standing before God, their own righteousness. They'll try to do this through loving God with all their heart, mind, and soul. They will believe that their evidence for their right standing before God is by establishing their own righteousness, by loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, by means of the law. And that's why Paul goes on to say they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. People who are ignorant of God's righteousness will look to the law to see if they have an established right standing before God through loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. But the scripture tells us to look to Jesus who was obedient under the law by which we have a right standing and a righteousness through him, and then the law comes to its end. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. See, under the system that John MacArthur is laying forth, the people listening to it would have to look to some future obedience of their own by which they're loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, some established righteousness that they perceive they have. Christ wouldn't be the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. He wouldn't be the end of the law. He would just be a motivational speaker telling you that, well, you, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, according to John MacArthur, if you love me, keep the Ten Commandments, and that's because he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Even Jesus made a differential between his commandments and the Father's commandments. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So there's a clear differential between the Father's commandment and Jesus' com commandment, and that commandment is defined in 1 John. This is his commandment, to believe on the name of the Son of God. Something that John MacArthur is completely bypassing as evidence of a true believer. So in this system that John MacArthur is laying forth, Christ isn't the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. You have to look to some future obedience of you loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's just the beginning of your best efforts and your best attempts to keep the law, to know if you really do have a right standing before God, if you really are a true believer. That's what John MacArthur is laying forth, which clearly shows that he's a false gospel advocate. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord. And observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being and they obey. See, in another sense, by clear implication, what John MacArthur is saying is, how can you know that you're really not guilty before God? How can you know that you're a true believer and have a not guilty status before God? And then he references the law that if you're loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, which is completely opposite of what the Bible tells us, we can know that we have a not guilty verdict before God, completely independent from the law and loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. The scripture says we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That a person has a non-guilty verdict apart from any performance and obedience to the law, apart from loving God with all their heart, mind, and soul, they have a non-guilty verdict by faith in Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul meant, that through the law I died to the law that I might live for God. To live for God, you have to believe in what Jesus Christ accomplished on our behalf by making us not guilty and righteous in his sight. But if you look to your own performance and obedience under the law of loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you're not living for God anymore. You're not living by faith in the Son of God. As God calls us to live according to the gospel, that the just shall live by faith. And that's by faith in the Son of God. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So the way that we continually live as believers is by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us. And Paul said, the law is not a faith, however the man that lives by them will do them. So Paul tells us the law is not a faith and we're supposed to live by faith. And so John MacArthur is teaching that you live by the law, that you live by loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. 
as evidence that you're a true believer. But evidence of being a true believer is that you have a conceptualized death to the law, that you're not looking to it to be made righteous or justified or not guilty before God, but that you look to Christ alone independent from law performance. In Romans 7, it says, brothers and sisters, you have died to the law through the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that you might be joined to another. So we have died to the relationship of loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength as evidence to be a believer, to be a believer, to be saved, to be made righteous, to be not guilty, to have peace with God, to have sanctification, have redemption. All these things are found in Christ and not in the law. And to go back to the law makes you a spiritual adulterer. Because once you've been married to Jesus Christ, who has provided all these things, and then you go to the law to try to seek those things out, you become a spiritual adulterer to Jesus Christ, who has provided all those things in himself. And so John MacArthur is ultimately teaching people to commit spiritual adultery, to look away from Jesus Christ, from their ultimate right standing before God, and look to their performance in the future, to the law. When John MacArthur says to be a true believer and the evidence of that is that you're loving God with all your heart, mind and soul by, and strength, by implication, what he's saying is that to know that you really have a not guilty status before God, you'll be keeping the law. You'll be loving God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. But the scripture says by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. Never by the law will you have the knowledge that you have a not guilty verdict before God through loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Only through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Only through the law comes the knowledge that you're not loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. In one sense, John MacArthur is doing what a lot of false teachers do, and that is to deceive people in believing that they can keep the law to some measure to be right and righteous in God's sight. And that evidence that you're truly not guilty before God and that you really do have salvation is your obedience to the law. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being and they obey. Okay, do you want to quickly take the John MacArthur salvation test? Are you being obedient to the law? Are you keeping the law? Are you loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? And all the law and the prophets are connected to that. So that means to be a true believer, are you keeping the entirety of the law? Are you loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength? And all that's connected to that, that demonstrates that? Because that's evidence that you're a true believer, according to John MacArthur. He's ultimately relying on the works of the law to know if he's a true believer. And the scripture says, all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For cursed is everyone who doesn't continue to do all things in the book of the law to perform them. That if you rely on the works of the law to be not guilty before God or to have a righteous status, it's a curse because you have to do all things in the law perfectly and completely. You have to do them all without fail. This demonstrates John MacArthur's ignorance of the functionality of the law because the scripture tells us whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at one point is guilty of all of it if you stumble at one point concerning the law you're guilty of all of it you're guilty of not loving god with all your heart mind soul and strength and since people commit sinful infractions to one measure or one degree or another every day Every day under the law, a person's inability to keep it perfectly and completely is a demonstration that they're not loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so John MacArthur is putting people on, under law conceptualization, which will only bring condemnation, guilt, and ultimately the judgment and wrath of God on the day of judgment for believing a false gospel. The law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. The law that John MacArthur is trying to conceptualize people under only brings about the wrath of God. Attempts in the flesh to try to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength just fall short and bring on the wrath of God. Our attempts to try to keep the law, our best attempts to try to keep the law do not please God. That's why the scripture says without faith it is impossible to please God. 
our faith in God's Son who kept the law perfectly for us is pleasing to God, not our attempts to keep the law. Because those attempts end in catastrophic failure, the scripture says all our righteousness is as filthy rags. All our attempts to be good end up in catastrophic failure 100% of the time. All our righteousness, not some or partial or incremental attempts to be good, but all of it collectively and equally is filthy rags before God. That's why we look to Jesus Christ by which we get a perfect righteousness independent from the law. So the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. And that's for those who believe. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That when you believe in Christ, there's no more law, so there's no more transgression. The law comes to its end, so there's no more law, there's no more transgression. If you had to look to the future of your obedience of loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, there would be constant transgression every single day. It's only the self-righteous and the self-deceived that don't see themselves guilty under the law. You shall again do what? Obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. So how can you tell when someone is really a believer? They love the Lord with all their being and they obey. What John MacArthur is ultimately saying is how do you ultimately know that you're saved since to be a true believer means that you're truly saved? How do you know that you're truly saved? Well, are you keeping the law? Are you keeping the Ten Commandments? Are you loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Because this is how you can ultimately know that you're justified in the sight of God. This is how you can ultimately know that you're righteous in God's sight. This is how you can ultimately know that you're saved by your obedience to the law. This is all the clear implications of what John MacArthur is saying as terms of what being a true believer means is that you have performance and obedience to the law by which demonstrates that you really are not guilty in God's sight. According to his backloaded works gospel what he's saying is the way you can know that you really have a right standing in god's sight is if you're loving god with all your heart mind soul and strength a child could understand the false implications of what john macarthur is presenting here you want to know if you're righteous in god's sight you have a right standing before him are you keeping the law in this system john macarthur is creating you couldn't know the moment you believe you're justified and made righteous in God's sight, you would have to work under the law to gain that favor. You would have to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and have to be obedient to that. Romans chapter 4, verses 4 and 5 says, To the one who works, it's not counted as favor, but as wages do. But to the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. The one who's trying to work to get favor under the law, to try to love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, they don't get the favor they suppose, which is they don't get the justification. They don't get the righteousness that they would suppose. It's to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is accredited to righteousness. How can you know that you're righteous in God's sight? How can you know that you're justified? By believing in him who justifies the ungodly and makes him righteous on the basis of faith to the one who does not work, so you don't have to do anything, you don't have to work under the law, you don't have to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. To the one who doesn't work, but believes on him, Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So when John MacArthur says, how can you know that you're a true believer? How can you know by implication you're truly saved? And then he references law, performance, and obedience of loving God with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. So what he's saying by implication is, how can you know that you have eternal life? And then he references your obedience to the law. But how we can know that we have eternal life is by believing in the Son. First John says, these things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. We can know that we have eternal life by believing on Jesus as the once and for all, all sufficient, all time, perfect sacrifice. If to know if we had eternal life or if we were a true believer was law dependent, then we can never know. And the moment that you think that you have eternal life based on law dependency is a sign of self-deception. Believing that a sign that you 
have eternal life and that you're a true Christian is that you are loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The only way that you can truly know that you have eternal life according to scripture is by believing on the Son. These things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Not think or hope or wish it's a possibility or maybe or we'll find out when we get there. But these things I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this false gospel system that John MacArthur is setting up, the only way people could know is through individualized performance to the law that they have eternal life. So I'm going on 29 minutes. I think I've demonstrated enough that John MacArthur has a destructive false gospel where his backloading works. And while he presents himself as very articulate and with a lot of Bible knowledge, when it comes to his gospel, it's false. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope your night or day is going good and everything's going well with you. Take care. Then I got me down.